All right, we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Um, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of Mornings with the Museum. Uh, the theme for this morning is Fantastic Friends Part 4, because in just a few short moments, I'll turn it over to some fellow Champaign County Museum Network members so we can learn more about uh, some of these great local institutions that are located right here in Champaign County in East Central Illinois. Uh, my name is Pat Kane uh, with the Museum of the Grand Prairie and the Champaign County Forest Preserve District. Um, and let's learn who else is joining us um, uh, for today's program. Uh, so Kim, would you mind uh, introducing yourself to the audience? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kim Sanford. I'm the Assistant Director of Education at the Spurlock Museum in Urbana. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the museum and all kinds of wonderful things that we're doing right now. Thanks, Kim, and thanks for being here. Um, uh, Eric, how about you? Hi, I'm Eric Johnson. I'm the director of the William M. Starko Planetarium at Parkland College. Uh, we just recently reopened and I'm looking forward to sharing with you all uh, what we are playing back in the dome once again. Thank you, Eric, and thanks to you as well for being here. Um, uh, Spurlock Museum, uh, Starko Planetarium, Museum of the Grand Prairie, all member institutions of uh, Champaign County Museums Network, um, a collection of uh, 11 museums, nature centers, archives, and uh, planetarium, um, and so much more located here in Champaign County. What we do is we try to work together to encourage best practices among museums, uh, uh, museum professionals, as well as collaborate in a number of ways to show our community the benefits and available resources available at these network institutions, which is why we're here today, to talk about these awesome local institutions here in Champaign County in East Central Illinois. A few things before we get started. Um, uh, let us know where you're watching from. If you haven't done so already, down in the comment section below. Suzanne is tuning in from Tuscola High, Sc High School. Thank you so much for tuning in, Suzanne. Really appreciate that. But appreciate everyone else who's tuning in out there, whether you're watching live or potentially watching this recorded. We always love to see where folks are watching from. So write down below your location. Um, if you wouldn't mind, let us know where you're watching from uh, this morning. Also, uh, this is designed to be a great conversation, not only amongst the three of us, but uh, with you as well, the viewers out there. So send us your questions in the comments section down below. It makes it a lot uh, more engaging for us as well as more engaging for you when you send in those questions. So we would love to address any and all questions you may have as best as we possibly can. So again, write those down in the comments section below. Um, if you'd like to learn more about uh, Champaign County Museums Network, feel free to check out our website at champaigncountymuseums.org or by finding us on social media uh, on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, uh, as well as YouTube. Uh, check us out there. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and jump into today's program. Uh, oh, also, uh, our good friend Perry is letting us know that he's tuning in from Urbana. So hey, Perry, uh, thanks so much for watching. Um, so we'll jump into today's program and to learn more about uh, two awesome, great institutions, part of Champaign County Museums Network. Um, uh, Kim and Eric, which one of you wants to go first and, and telling us a little bit more about your institution and what you got going on there? Go ahead, Eric. It's fine. Uh, okay. Sounds good. Um, so what I wanted to share with you folks uh, is uh, my excitement over us have, being able to have public shows once again. We were closed for about 17 months. We were running virtual programs in the meantime. It's, I was surprised it's actually been over a month since I had one of those virtual shows. So I feel like I'm almost a little rusty at staring into my webcam to do one of these things <laughs> once again. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna share with you folks some information you can find on our website so that you can see what the planetarium is up to okay so this is the main page for the starco planetarium um the first place i'm going to go is to events and click on calendar so that you all can see uh what shows we have going on so the planetarium is reopened we are having shows on friday and saturday nights once again there are a couple of differences 
Keep in mind that we are adhering to the college's masking policy where everybody vaccinated or unvaccinated is required to wear a mask. If you forget to bring yours, we can provide a disposable mask for you, of course. Um, but we're also trying to limit our um, seating capacity. Even though the planetarium seats 128 people, we are not selling more than 60 tickets for a single show. Um, we haven't had any sellouts yet, but it's just something to keep in mind if you're wondering why uh, there might be no seats available, potentially, who knows. Um, one other major change, if you look really closely, you might not be able to read this here, but our early shows on Friday and Saturday nights are lo no longer starting at 7 p.m. They're now starting at 6.30 instead. Uh, the reason for that is to just allow us to get a half hour to clean the seats between the shows. Some people attend only one show, some people only attend the other, and this allows us to be a little bit more considerate of uh, whatever disinfecting measures we need to take, okay? Now, as for the shows that we're going to play, you can see a couple of them right here. Uh, every Friday night, we do Summer Prairie Skies. It's a lovely live narrated tour of the night sky. That's actually what I was doing for my virtual shows, but we're so glad to be doing those back in the dome once again. Um, on Saturday nights, we have our extremely popular Sesame Street show, One World, One Sky, Big Bird's Adventure. As a matter of fact, actually, this Saturday is the last time you'll be able to see that show for a while. So if you uh, want to see Big Big Bird and Elmo and their friend from China, Hu Hu Ju, uh, you got to stop by for that. Um, and then our show that we're doing at eight o'clock on both Fridays and Saturdays is called Birth of Planet Earth. And this is a really neat full dome video that shows how our solar system formed and how Earth came to be what we see in the present day. Um, it's really amazing. Some incredible visualizations that were actually produced in part by the University of Illinois. Um, over at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications, they have their advanced visualization lab. Those folks worked with the show producers to help produce some of the imagery you see in this video. Um, so it's uh, really neat to catch if you can. Um, the reason why the Sesame Street program is ending after this week is because we have another new show that's debuting um, the week after that. On September 18th, let me click on coming soon, we have our very first dinosaur show. It's called Did an Asteroid Really Kill the Dinosaurs? Okay. Um, it is technically a kid's show, but what I've been telling everybody about this is that you're just never too old for dinosaurs. So we hope this one's going to be really popular for right. us. Okay. So yeah, uh, we've got that going on uh, starting this fall. If you're curious about this other program you see here, Mayan Archaeo Astronomy Observer of the, Observers of the Universe, uh, we're looking forward to showing that show soon. Um, but right now, our ma the main time when we'll be scheduling that program for the public is the Spanish language version of the program. We have a show, we have a, a presenter for some of our shows who is a native of Chile and he is, um, oh, he's actually, excuse me, I'm sorry. He has actually done one of those programs um, over Zoom earlier this spring. Uh, he did it entirely in Spanish and he will be presenting some programs this fall entirely in Spanish. I don't have dates for you folks quite yet, um, but we're looking forward to sharing those soon. It'll most likely be a Saturday afternoon. Um, we're trying to see how those audiences are going to work. If we want to go with people who are uh, fully fluent speakers. Um, but I got to tell you, I listened to the program that he did when he gave a tour of the night sky. And while most of it, I didn't fully understand because I never actually even took Spanish in high school. Um, there were certain things that I was able to follow along with pretty well. So it would be a quite interesting thing to, uh, to expose yourself to if you're interested. Okay. Let's see here. Um, in addition to all of these, let me go ahead and bring up the Kaler lecture series. Um, we did this last year over Zoom, and we're happy to have this once again back in person. Um, we are having on the first Friday of the month, we are having a science lecture series uh, being given by various uh, various speakers from various fields. It's not all about astronomy. Um, so we actually have some 
uh, community college students who did research over the summer uh, with something that says here, phenotypic plasticity research, okay? That's a couple of words you probably haven't heard before, honestly, but I'll just tell you it's basically biochemistry, okay? Um, <laughs> and they're gonna give some neat talks uh, on October 1st. Okay, we'll have about three speakers for that. And then later on, we'll have talks about nuclear power. We're gonna have talks about uh, social behavior uh, using these tiny little fish called sticklebacks. Uh, we will have an astronomy talk um, and we'll talk about material science and then also some interesting chemistry. So we always have a really neat set of speakers that we try to offer you folks each year uh, for the Kaler Science Lecture Series. Let's see here. Uh, in addition to all of this, um, if those times don't work for you, please consider booking us for your own group shows. We love getting field trips with you all. And I know if you're a school, uh, sometimes the field trips aren't quite an option right now because of the pandemic. Um, but you know, you can consider booking us for virtual programs as well. Um, but if you're just coming as a group and you want to do uh, a private show with us, you can book something on weekdays or on weekends or on weeknights. Uh, you can go to our website to find out what our pricing is for those programs. Um, in fact, if you wanna see exactly what shows are available to you, we have a show listing page here. And nowadays I think we have over 30 programs available. And we even tell you exactly what grade levels would be most appropriate for you to check out for all of this. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of neat topics that you can learn about by coming to the planetarium. Um, uh, in addition to those sorts of bookings, uh, we also have another pro popular segment called the Traveling Space Shoot Show. Um, I think Pat and Kim, you can probably recognize an old picture of Dave right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's putting a uh, an astronaut suit right there on a kid, and and um, I have you know I think I'll keep that picture up for a while. But um, we uh, do allow you folks to uh, try on that spacesuit and everything. It's not an actual spacesuit; those cost a couple million dollars. <laughs> but you can actually see what all is necessary to allow us to survive in space with this spacesuit show. Um, let's see here, what else? Um, I showed you folks about how you can book a couple of programs. Um, if I go to the For the Kids page right here, uh, I wanted to share that we've had lots of birthday parties. We actually have one scheduled for later this month. Um, in addition to having birthday parties at the planetarium, we also have actually booked a couple of weddings. We actually have one coming up pretty soon. So if any of you are looking to have a very interesting location for your ceremony, uh, you might consider joining us. Um, we've got a lot of cool things in our lobby. Uh, one recent addition to the things in our lobby, we actually got a humongous seven foot wide banner commemorating the 30th anniversary of the Hubble Space Telescope. And uh, I can show you an image of what that looks like right now if you're curious. Nice. Yeah, this is something that those folks um, who photographed this, they refer to it as a cosmic reef, okay? Um, so if you walk up to this banner, you can see a full description about everything you're seeing right here in both English and in Spanish, okay? So I, I love that we can offer that to both of those audiences. Um, or if you're just looking to learn um, how how what the description looks like in both of those languages. Um, one other last thing that I wanted to share with you folks, let's go to educational resources. We've got lots of cool things in here. I'm gonna click on tonight's sky first. If you're just curious about seeing what is visible in the evening sky, you see this column. We uh, are reprinting what Dave Leak has written for the News Gazette for every Sunday. That's what's written here. If you want to see a star chart of what is visible in the evening sky, uh, let me see if clicking on this will work. It does. It's just taking some time to load up. You can print this for yourself and you could actually use this to compare with what you're seeing overhead um, on a clear night. Tonight's actually a clear night, so it would be a good chance. If you want to see an example of this, I actually have this in my hand. Uh, if you look closely at the image there, you might be a little confused to see why N is at the top and S is at the bottom, but East is on the left and west is on the right. The reason why is because this star chart is designed for you to hold it over your head, okay? 
And when you do it like that, if you're oriented correctly, east will be on the left, north will be on behind you, west will be to the right. And you can always just turn it in order to point in the various directions where you're looking. Okay, um, so it's a very useful tool that we put together every season to help you see what would you'd find in the sky. Um, and if you want to get a closer look at the heavens, we also actually rent out telescopes. Okay, I rented out a few of those over the course of the pandemic. Those were sometimes the only people that actually visited our offices. <laughs> um, but we've got a few Dobsonian telescopes. Uh, you see it in here. It doesn't give you a sense of how big it is. Uh, the mirror inside of this tube is 10 inches in diameter. So this telescope, you might have a hard time fitting it in a compact car, but I've been successful. I've been able to fit something like this in a Civic. So, so I think you're welcome to try it for yourself, but we do rent these for a night or for a weekend um, with no problem. And we give you lots of instructions on how to use these things correctly as well. Okay. Um, and if you're interested about some upcoming events uh, where you might be able to use that telescope, uh, feel free to check out the Champaign-Urbana Astronomical Society's website. Uh, they tell you about upcoming events. The planetarium actually hosts the monthly meetings of the club. We actually have one tomorrow night, if you're interested. Um, so you can check their calendar about what's going on there. And one event that the CUAS is actually doing with the Champaign County Forest Preserve District is up at Middle Fork River Forest Preserve. Um, we actually have a star watch scheduled up there on, I believe, October 2nd. I think that's, yeah, that's the right date. So um, if you're interested in going out to the first International Dark Sky Park in Illinois, uh, you might want to check that out so you can see the night sky and see the stars, and you'll probably see the Milky Way if the weather holds as well as it could. Okay. All right. Well, that, I think, is everything I wanted to share. How long did that go? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but there's, it's, you know, I, I, I'm reminded of all of the great things that, you know, that, that you all offer there at Starkle Planetarium, you know, not only there, but then also for, for those folks who are just looking for resources, whether it's the star charts or other information, you know, there's so much stuff there. Um, yeah, I greatly appreciate, you know, all the work that, that Starkle and, and, and CU Astronomical Society has, yes. has done, you know, for, for, uh, you know, education on on the night sky and you know the heavens and you know all that stuff um, we're just trying to spread our addiction around Oops. that's right man <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i will i will say you know i've been to some planetarium shows i've rented a telescope and i've used those star charts and they're all awesome you know so so check them out um you know there's a lot of great stuff there from starkle eric any any you know a couple things that folks could look out for in the night sky real quick oh yeah right now so for the next couple of months, if you look over into the west, right after sunset, you should be able to see the planet Venus, okay? Um, it sets a couple, I think it's, it's now setting about two hours after sunset. Um, I was out there on Monday night out at the CUAS Observatory. Uh, they call it the Prairie Winds Observatory now. Um, there were a lot of clouds, so I was barely seeing it above all the, uh, above all the corn. Um, at about 8.30 that night. Um, but you're probably going to have a much easier time catching Jupiter and Saturn over in the southeastern sky. Um, they're a lot brighter right now because they're higher up in the sky, um, and those are really great things to catch. So if you're seeing something very bright over in that, that direction in the southeast, those will be uh, easy things to catch. Uh, in addition, if you're just looking straight overhead after sunset, you'd probably see the summer triangle right there too. Cool. And if you get outside of town, you might see the Milky Way. I, even if you go out to the observatory, only like 20 minute drive, um, it's a pretty quick trek to uh, see that too. Well, nice. Well, thanks for that, Eric. You know, mm -hmm. planets, see some, see some stars, see the Milky Way even, you know, if you can't uh, uh, hear in central Illinois or wherever you may be um all right uh well thank you eric appreciate that again so much going on at uh, uh circle planetarium i'll post a link to their website in the comments here uh so you can check out all of those things that eric uh was referencing um, um in his talk uh kim how about you what's going on at spurlock nothing <laughs> <laughs> no lots of lots of stuff um as Eric uh, was mentioning that we do have uh, to be very 
careful in terms of protocols for COVID. Uh, you will need to wear a mask if you come to the Spurlock and we hope that you will. Um, we have been very concerned in terms of what do we do for guided programs. And so right now, what we're saying for fall is that we're only going to do in-person, in the museum, guided tours with um, college students. We know that, that uh, they are required to have been vaccinated, but that doesn't mean that we're not doing things for schools. If a school would like to come in and do a self-guided tour, they are, uh, you know, they just need to contact me and we'll get you on the calendar. Um, I also am doing Zoom programs. So if you'd like to see like masks around the world or hear some stories from around the world for your classroom, please let me know. Other um, programs are also available and we can talk over what would be best for your age and, and what you're studying in your different units. Um, we also, I'm in the process last year since, you know, nobody was in the schools, we're doing everything through Zoom. I actually created several sets of activities under different topics in Google Classroom, things like uh, topics of gold and salt and stimulants and trade, things like that. And if you are interested in having access to those, we would be I'd be very happy to talk to you about how you can do that. So you could do that with classes as well. Um, we have gallery activities. One of our most popular things in the museum are our bingo games, trying to find all different kinds of treasures on different themes in our galleries. But I'm also very, very happy to talk with a group that plans on coming to come up with worksheets that might be more specific to whatever topic it is that they would like to learn about while they're in the museum. One of the most exciting things that we really want people um, to be coming for is a new exhibit that will be opening on November 2nd. We have had um, exhibits up much longer uh, than we normally do the temporary exhibits because of COVID. We wanted, we had one um, exhibit our blues dance exhibit in America opened like three weeks before the major lockdown in March of 2020. So we've kept it open so that we have um, plenty of time for people to take a look at that. And we are also um, opening this new exhibit, like I said, on November 2nd. It is called Sewn in Memory AIDS Quilt Panels from Central Illinois. And let me just read the little blurb that, that is being put together about that. Sewn in memory, AIDS Quilt Panels from Central Illinois exhibit will display approximately 20 quilt panels made for the National AIDS Memorial Quilt in the 1980s and early 90s. They commemorate local people who died of AIDS and they were created by friends and families. The panels are held by the Greater Community AIDS Project of East Central Illinois. Research and programming for this exhibit is in collaboration with GCAP and History Harvest, a class in the Department of History at the University of Illinois. So we are um, very, very pleased to be working with GCAP and putting this together. Um, actually, I'm not involved at all in the development of this. Uh, exhibit, but I was very, very pleased to see I lost a very dear friend that we called Paco um, back in uh, the 80s, the um, late 70s, early 80s, and um, there's actually a quilt for him. So it's very wonderful to be able to be reminded of him, and I'll be able to go by that quilt every day as I walk into my office. And I'm very glad that that he's being memorialized as a part of this. So we are planning an opening for it, probably something that is virtual. And as soon as the date is set for that, we will get that up on our website. Lots of other events going on, some in terms of... Um, being connected with exhibits. We have um, two of our trivia nights. We have been working for 
little over a year now with uh, Julie Lout, who does the CU Lockdown Trivia Nights on Fridays. And she is going to be doing two trivia nights for us this semester. On October 16th, it'll be a trivia that goes with our Blues Dancing in America exhibit. And on December 4th, one that goes with the AIDS exhibit. What else have we got going on? Every Wednesday since, well, took a couple of Christmas weeks off, but every Wednesday um, since April 4th, I have been doing live storytelling on Facebook at 1.15. And so just a few hours from now, if you'd like to hear some stories, come to the Spurlock's Facebook page and I'll be happy to have you in the audience. We also are starting again. We haven't had these since um, the pandemic started. We're back with our Spurlock Sundays. So the second Sunday of each month from 1 to 3.30, there will be a program that you can bring the whole family to, have a lot of fun. Um, our very next one is actually this Sunday, which is also Grandparents Day. And our uh, what I'm going to say, our activity is inspired by a program that we are involved in, which is the Great Art Doors, which was started by 40 North. And who else is involved? The park districts are involved. And basically, if you go to our website, you can see that there are artworks in the parks all around Champaign-Urbana. And we have last month and this month been inspired for our activity by one of the artworks that's on display. We're actually going to be having the artist in and working with us this Sunday. Um, her name is Moran Tracy and she has an artwork called Waiting to Fly, which is beautiful kites that she's made that um, fly in the wind at Crystal Lake Park. So if you come Sunday at one o'clock, you will be able to make your own kite and take it outside and fly it. Come on other um, Sundays in October and November and December, and there's all other kinds of wonderful things going on. Looks like we're getting close on time, Pat. I'll end it there and just say, come to our website and you'll see all kinds of wonderful things going on. Yeah, thank you so much, Kim. Yeah, I can uh, I can attest to Kim's storytelling ability. She's an awesome storyteller. So check out those virtual stories and you know all the other things that Kim was mentioning uh, that that Spurlock Museum is putting on, whether it's virtual things or if you have the opportunity to if you uh, if you're local or you want to make a, a short trip to Champaign County, um, uh, check out uh, Spurlock Museum as well as you know check out Circle Planetarium. A lot coming up these two great local institutions so yeah with that we are uh we are out of time but i appreciate uh kim and eric i appreciate your time appreciate you sharing so much with us um uh, about starkle planetarium and spurlock museum um, i just posted in the comments section uh the website for spurlock museum and i also posted uh previously the website for starkle planetarium so check out these websites to learn more about these great local institutions part of the Champaign County Museums Network. And uh, I believe uh, both of you are also, uh, both your institutions are also on social media. Yeah, is, mm -hmm. that, is that right? Yep. So Facebook, yep. um, check out Facebook. And I believe you guys both have a Twitter and Instagram. Yep. Yeah, I've, I've, I've learned to uh, start putting up Twitter posts again and Instagram posts <laughs> for the first time. Too yeah. much to keep up with, man. I, yeah. I can hear you on that. So um, Yeah, and if you want to see our old shows, we actually put up a YouTube page, too, to, uh, for all of our awesome. old recordings. So. Yeah. We have YouTube as well. Lots of wonderful things to see there. Awesome. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Kim. Thank you, Eric. Thanks to uh, folks out there for tuning in, whether you watch live or recorded. And Hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks.